Hello, and welcome to episode three of the Sarah Seams podcast. Hello, and welcome uh, to any new or returning viewers. Uh, today is January 21st, 2023. My name is Sarah. I'm the maker here at the Sarah Seams podcast. I live in Columbus, Ohio with my partner and our two cats. And yeah, today I'm gonna share some finished objects, works in progress, um, some very fun acquisitions from a recent trip to Chicago, and a few other little things about my uh, trip to Chicago as well, some recommendations. So I'm gonna just jump right in with what I'm wearing. So this is, I'll scoot back so you can see a bit more. This is an Ilford jacket. Uh, the pattern is by Friday Pattern Co. So you can see the sleeves here. This is a heavyweight cotton flannel from Blackbird Fabrics. So this is probably, I would say it's heavier than a typical shirting weight um, flannel. I normally wear this as like a shacket. I was jumping on that trend. Today's episode is kind of about trends. I'm not much of a trend follower usually, but when I see something I like, I like to find a way to fit it into my wardrobe. So this was one of the trends I jumped on last year for sewing, the shacket, shirt jacket. Um, and so yeah, I did the version with the two pocket flaps um, and it's actually lined with some navy silk noil scraps that I had, silk noil, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, I had lying around. So the pockets and the collar and the cuffs are all lined with that navy fabric because I ran out. I didn't cut them, I didn't realize I needed to cut the lining pieces. So I ran out of the of the flannel, so we had to get creative. But sometimes those end up being like the nice little details that you actually love in a garment. So at least that's what I tell myself. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I'm wearing, the Ilford jacket by Friday Pattern Co. And I'm gonna jump into finished objects. So I have two finished objects today. The first one is sewing, and the second one is knitting. So the first one, um, if you saw my last episode, I was talking a little bit about sewing struggles. So I had two sewing projects in a row that didn't really work out the way I wanted them to for one reason or another. Um, and one of them was pretty labor intensive. It was a color blocked um, blazer vest. It was the um, Heather Blazer by Friday Pattern Company. And they just didn't turn out right for different reasons. But I was saying at the end of that episode that I felt like I needed like a quick win with my sewing just to kind of like get my sojo back. And so for me, a lot of times that quick win that I want is a knit. So I will show you here. This is the t-shirt dress by Juliana Martayev, I believe is how it's pronounced. And this is a new to me designer who is based in Berlin. And this pattern is very oversized and it's only, um, it comes available in the pattern in three different sizes and each one is like a three size bucket. So I made the largest size, which was bucket like XL through XXL. But the cool thing is if you reach out to them for no additional charge, they will draft you your own custom size. So if you, um, if they do not have your size available in the ready to print patterns, they will draft it for you, which I think is a great feature that I wish more pattern companies would offer because that is true. You know, it's an extra step. So like if you're a larger size, you're having to jump over a hurdle to get the correct size, but at least they will offer it to you free of charge. And I think that's great. Like no one's gonna get size out of this pattern if they're willing to reach out to the company about their custom size. So it's, I'll put a picture in so you can see the design first and I'll just show you the fabric. It is a, like I said, super oversized, cozy, um, drop shoulder t-shirt dress. And I got this knit at a fabric swap at so to speak which is one of our local fabric stores and i wanted to wear this today but i knew it would be like super optic <laughs> on camera so um that's why i'm wearing my ilford instead but yeah so it's just a black super skinny black and kind of like beige stripe and i intended to use it horizontally but when i went to cut it out like i said i got this at a fabric swap so i wasn't exactly sure how much yardage i had 
and when I went to cut it out it wouldn't it would like just barely not fit with the stripes horizontal so I made it vertical instead so I don't know this isn't gonna look great on camera so I apologize for that but you can see here's the neckline with the vertical stripes also my serger did something crazy when I was making this so it has this like pretty bad looking like really chunky serge neckband but when I'm wearing it you can't tell it looks fine from the outside so yeah it has the little vertical stripes on the neckband and then also on the sleeve it's all vertical stripe and yeah I just this is like super cozy it's like pajama dressing for me like I just I wore this in Chicago with tights and my black combat boots and my jacket and it was just like really comfortable but also cute um, I love a t-shirt dress so I think I will definitely be making more of these in the future because it was super super quick and easy like I didn't even have to follow the instructions for this like if you sewn a t-shirt you could sew this dress it was super super easy so that is my t-shirt dress by Juliana Martievs I'm really sorry if I'm mispronouncing that I probably am any German viewers out there want to correct me, that would be awesome. I'll link it below so you all can see. And my second finished object is knitting. So I believe I had gotten started on these as a whip last time I recorded, but I've now finished them. So um, I'll just hold them up. These are, this is a pair of socks that I knit as a gift for a family friend, and I'm not gonna say who in case they happen to watch. Um, but yeah, they'll hopefully be gifted in the next couple of weeks. And I think they are turned out super fun. Um, yeah, so it's a pretty low contrast yarn combination. So you can see, like I wanna show you both of them because they turned out pretty different. There we go. But I'll just show this one for the sake of explaining what they are. So I used um, two yarns that I had in stash for these. Um, the kind of gray that I used for the cuff and the toe is Knit Picks Stroll in their um, Jackrabbit Heather color. And the contrasting color I got secondhand from my favorite online secondhand art supply store called Make and Mend. And it is, I believe it's Jojo Land is the brand. Oh, let me double check. Yeah, so it's Jojo Land, but I couldn't really read the rest of the label because it was a little bit damaged. Um, but yeah, it's this really pretty color changing yarn. They're 100% merino. This was my first time working with color changing yarn and I'm not sure how I feel about it. That might be like a hot take. Um, I think these turned out really pretty and I like the low contrast with the gray, but I felt I'm like a little bit of a control freak with my makes and I felt like I did not have a lot of control with these which maybe that's a good thing <laughs> maybe I need more of that in my life um, and like I said I do really like how they turned out but I feel like if I was using like spin cycle or some other color changing yarn in a project I think I would feel the need to color manage it and that would be stressful for me so let me know what you think what do you think about color changing yarns like do you just roll with it and however it turns out, that's how it turns out. I know Casey at Young Folks, Folk Knits was talking about this on her most recent podcast too and I I feel like I kind of agree um, with what she was saying but she's used color changing yarn in a lot of garments and I've yet to do that. So I'd love to hear what you guys think about color changing yarns. Um, but yeah, these are my, well there is not a pattern. That was the other thing I was gonna talk about with these. Um, this was my first time making a pair of socks without using a pattern. So I've been knitting socks for over a year now. I've probably knit like approaching 20 pairs of socks at this point. And I've always used a pattern. But I do feel like now I'm at the point where I have my own like vanilla sock recipe in my head. Um, and I can just make like a simple sock with stripes or whatever um, other pattern um, just from memory. which felt like a big milestone for me because I was always afraid like, oh, I'm gonna mess up the heel count or I'm gonna, you know, but like now I feel really confident in doing that. So that these were kind of a win for me in that way. My first pair of socks made from memory without pattern. So that feels pretty cool. And I do think too, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this later, but 
I, I think I'm gonna do a little book review episode about Pom Pom Mag's Ready Set Socks book because I think that also helped give me a little bit of confidence to think of socks as more of a formula and less of a strict pattern that I need to follow. So yeah, I feel really good about these. This is my last FO for the week. And now I'm gonna move on to works in progress. So I have quite a few whips <laughs> to share with you today. I think I have six things that I wanna talk about. So the first one, I don't have anything physical to show you, so I'll put a picture in. I'm planning to make all three sizes of the ZW stash bag or zero waste stash bag by um, Baguettes is the designer and I'll link that below. So now that I've got more knitting projects on the go, I find myself needing more project bags. And I have a lot of this natural um, denim that I bought from Sewn Fabric Store, which is based in Washington. And I bought it to make jeans, but when I got it in, it was way too light. Um, so it's kind of just been sitting in my stash and I wasn't exactly sure what I was gonna use it for. But I decided I wanted to make these bags and they've been on my to make list for a while. So I've actually already cut them all out, all three sizes, and they're just ready to be sewn. So maybe I'll get to at least one of them, hopefully this weekend or this week. And these are just gonna be really nice, like utilitarian bags for me to keep my bigger knitting projects in. And that's especially what I've been struggling with. Now that I'm knitting more garments, I find myself needing more and more <laughs> larger bags to keep them in. Um, Cause I can show you, I normally keep my knitting projects in these little hay, the brand is called hay, um, these little collapsible crates. I've seen a few other knitters use these as well. Um, they just come in like super fun colors and they're really affordable, but garments outgrow these pretty quickly. <laughs> so I've definitely been needing some larger bags. So I'm excited to have these. Um, if I didn't already, I'll put a picture in of uh, the three different bag designs. And it's really cool. I would say this pattern is designed to be zero waste, but I would say if you're using fabric that you already have in stash, it's probably more like low waste. Um, I think if you can buy like the exact right amount of fabric that you need to make these, they would of course be zero waste because that's how they're designed to be. Um, each pattern fits into like a rectangle basically, and then you cut it up and use all the different parts and pieces. Um, but since I was using stash yarn, I definitely have some left over, so I'm sure I'll find another use for that, but I would say this is a low waste pattern for me. But zero waste sewing is really, I find it fun and interesting. It's kind of like a puzzle. Like you don't cut out your pattern pieces in the typical way. Like it's more about measuring and planning and like, I don't know, I feel like people who design zero waste patterns, it just like blows my mind. Like how they can think in that way and it's really cool. So yeah, have you? let me know if you've tried any zero waste sewing patterns. I think my favorite one is the Zero Ways to Gather dress by Birgitta Helmerson. I love that dress. I have two versions. I wear them all the time and I see more versions in my future. So yeah, let me know if you've tried any zero waste patterns. I'm excited to sew up these bags. And that is my next small sewing project. I have an upcoming large sewing project that I will talk about in the acquisition section. So to jump into knitting, I have one, two, three, four knitting <laughs> FOs. I have more too. I'm kind of like, I don't know what's gotten into me. I used to always just have like three knitting projects at once and now I'm like casting on like a crazy person. I guess I'm just really excited about knitting. So the first one, because I always have to have socks, of course. So um, these are the Copeland socks from the Ready Set Socks book by Pom Pom Magazine that I mentioned earlier. And this is the patterns in the book kind of go from like simplest to hardest. Um, and I'm kind of trying to work through them, not necessarily strictly in that order, but like I'd like to make all the patterns in the book this year. So yeah, these are my Copeland socks. This color is crazy bright. <laughs> Uh, let me hold this really close to the camera. So you can see it's like a super bright blue bordering on purple with little specks of hot pink and purple throughout. Really fun yarn. I love this yarn. It's been in my stash for a while because I felt kind of precious about it. Um, here is the yarn cake. And I got this, I also got this from Make and Men, so this is secondhand to me. 
and it is, here's the yarn tag. I'm sure I'm going to mispronounce this. It is Aracania Yarns from Chile. Um, and it's from Huasco is the region and there's a bunch of information in the tag about where this yarn is from and how this yarn is made. Um, this is 100% extra fine merino, 450 yards per 100 grams. And it is hand painted. Um, and it's just really, really pretty. So you can see I've already finished the first one. <laughs> I was working on this simultaneously with my stripe socks that I showed you earlier. So it's got a two by two rib cuff and that's about two and a half inches. Like it's a pretty deep cuff, but this is definitely more of an ankle sock. Um, Cause you know, I have a lot of mid calf socks and I've kind of identified that I need some more shorties and ankle socks. So yeah, it's this deep two by two rib cuff heel flap and gusset, which is my preferred, preferred construction. And then it just has a simple stockinette foot and toe. So yeah, these are super fun. Very excited to finish the second one and have these in my rotation. So I'm sure that these will be done for the next podcast and I'll probably have cast on more socks, <laughs> which I have some really exciting new sock yarn to share with you at the end of the episode. So there's always exciting new socks around the corner. All right, let's see. Second, um, in the last episode, I talked about some yarn that I recently purchased um, with a gift card from a local fabric store, fabric and yarn store to make the Able Cow. So I'll put a picture of that in here. Um, this is a design by Wool Folk. Uh, I think they frequently work with a lot of other designers, but this is one of their in-house designs. And I just love this. I think it's super pretty and I feel like it's very like whimsical. Um, and I, I don't know, it's just been fun to work on. So I did cast this on. I was thinking that this would be my car knitting for my drive to and from Chicago last weekend. To clarify, I was not driving, I was the passenger. <laughs> um, but I ended up working on my stripey socks instead because that was a gift knit with a deadline. So I kind of knocked those out and didn't really make much more progress on this. But I did cast it on and I'll show you what I have so far. So this is just the little bandana tip of the Able Cowl, but you start with this um, little section of honeycomb cables, and then you kind of move into, I would say most of it is garter with bobbles. So I've just done my first bobble, but then there's like little sections of cable too. So yeah, I just have this little bit so far, but I think this is gonna work up really fast and I might try and have this done for the next podcast too, because we're getting to the end of January, so we still have a few more months of cold, like it being cold enough to wear something like this here in Ohio, but I'd like to be able to wear it this season. So yeah, and the color is really pretty. Um, this is Quince & Co. Osprey, Quince & Co.'s Osprey base in the color Twig. Um, and I got two skeins of this, and it's like a dead-on match for the recommended Wolf Oak yarn as far as um, yards to grams, so. I'm hoping it'll knit up pretty similar to the recommended yarn and I'm really liking that so far. It's very fun to knit on. Um, there's a lot of different charts, so it definitely, you have to pay attention to it, but all the garter sections are pretty mindless. So it's a good mix of like, requires my attention and I can be watching TV at the same time. All right, my next knitting FO, and I'm excited about this one, is my Lento. So I'll put a picture of the design in here. This is a top-down raglan um, knit with DK or fingering plus mohair. You might be able to get away with like worsted. Um, and I'm making this as part of the Let's Lint hashtag Let's Linto knit along hosted by being hosted by Rebecca from the Crayabea podcast and Amy Palco. And this is being hosted on Instagram. And this sweater is so fast and fun to knit. So let me show you where I'm at. Okay, where's the back? All right, so I have finished the body and I am almost, I'm about ready to start ribbing on the first sleeve. So I am using Camellia Fiber Co. Yak DK Base. Sorry, my computer. 
Yak DK base and this is the color chocolate and this yarn is absolutely beautiful. I'm also counting this as my entry for um, Casey, app Casey from the Young Folk Knits podcast is hosting the bougie sweatshirt knit along. So I'm considering this my entry for that too because I think the yarn alone makes this bougie. This is fancy yarn and it is just dreamy. It's so soft and light. Um, and I love this color. I'm very into browns right now and like rich, like earthy tones. So this is, um, this base is mostly wool, but it has, I think like 20% yak and 10% silk. I think it's merino yak and silk. And because of the silk content, I'm pretty sure that this is going to grow significantly in length when I block it. So right now it is very cropped. <laughs> like I have a super short torso. And I like my sweaters to be very cropped, but this is like, it kind of looks like a baby sweater <laughs> to me right now, like compared to the other knit sweaters that I've knit, like it looks really short. So I'm going to finish it and block it and see how it comes out. I think I will end up having some leftover yarn, um, but if I, and if I do and I want to add more length, I'll be able to do that and I will because I want to wear this so bad. It's so pretty. I just love this color. I am getting a little tiny bit of laddering from the DP ends on the sleeve and I'm hoping that that will block out and if it doesn't I'll probably re-knit it because I want to wear this all the time and like if, the, if something like that is really obvious and it would bother me I would probably fix it. I tend to not be like super precious with my knits if I make a mistake and it won't prevent me from wearing it and it won't cause it to fall apart I'll usually leave it. Um, but something like that, like if it is really bad and would prevent me from wearing it, I'd probably, I'll probably fix it. So yeah, this is my Linto. Look at the increases, so clean and pretty. And I've been so enjoying this and so obsessed with it, I'm gonna make at least two more. <laughs> so I'm hoping to finish two during the knit along, which I think runs um, through March 5th or like the first week of March. And I was laughing because I just watched Rebecca from the Cray Bayas podcast and she's also planning like three versions of this and one of them is really similar <laughs> to one of the other versions I'm planning so I feel like I'm copying her but I feel like we bought our yarn at the same time. <laughs> I swear I'm not copying you. <laughs> but you know what they say, copying is the highest form of flattery so. Anyways, so that's my current lento that I'm working on. I'm hoping to finish that this weekend and start my second version as soon as possible. So my last knitting whip, I think last time I this was an acquisition, I was just sharing the yarn, um, but I did cast this on and I feel very uncertain about it. I don't know why I feel like very nervous about this project. So I told my partner Troy that I would make him a sweater and I, had the intention of making it for his birthday, which is in March, but then he picked the sweater he liked and I just got excited and ordered the yarn and didn't realize like, until I really started reading the pattern, like, oh, this is a bottom up fingering weight all over color work sweater. <laughs> so he's still gonna get it, but he's definitely not gonna get it for his birthday. Like maybe he's gonna get it for Christmas. So he'll probably get some more socks for his birthday. Um, so I did cast this on and when I swatched, I did not meet gauge. Like I think the gauge was supposed to be like 27 stitches per uh, 10 inches, 10 inches, 10 centimeters. And I had like 31. So I went up like half a needle, like, you know, two needle sizes. And I just cast on because I didn't want to swatch again because I feel like yarn is going to be tight. And I wasn't really sure how accurate that swatch was, like super small color work in the, in the round with like the strings going across the back. I was like, this feels like it's not really representative. So let me show you what I have. And I, if I didn't already, I'll put a picture of the sweater in too so you can see the design. So I basically just have the cuff, <laughs> but I did start the color work. So I finished the first repeat of the color work pattern which is just like a really cute little simple three stitch color work pattern and i'm knitting this on pretty small needles like i think this is like a 30 inch cord 
and ideally it would be on a longer cord, but I, I, ca I got to this point and I just felt like it looks really small. I will say my partner is also smaller than me, so like I'm used to knitting a bigger sweater than what I would be knitting for him, but I feel like I'm just not really gonna know what this, like how this is gonna end up until I block it. So, I don't know why I'm struggling with this so much. <laughs> I just feel uncertain about it. So I think what I'm gonna do is put this on some cords and try on and just see if it's like big enough to go around him and then maybe knit like a few more inches and then block it and then check my gauge. Cause I don't wanna knit like 47 centimeters of body and then realize it's too small. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just be like, hey, let me like put this over you and make sure it's big, it's gonna stretch enough um, because this is also 100% alpaca. So I should say that. The yarn is, this is a Santa Garn pattern. It's called the North Sea Pullover. Sorry, I just got into it and missed all the information. Um, yes, Santa Garn Mini Alpaca and the colorways are rust and blue. Uh, this is color 6063 and the rust is color, sorry, I know I have this written down somewhere. This is color, I do not have it written down. It's called rust, sorry about that. Um, and I got all of this, the pattern book and the yarn from uh, Mother Knitter, which is a US distributor of Santa's Garn yarn. Um, and their website's super cool and easy to use. You basically just pick the pattern you want and it links right to the yarn and you pick your colors in the correct quantities, puts it all in the cart, super duper easy. So yeah, I started this one and I was, I think I'm intimidated by it because it's my first all over color work sweater, my first fingering weight sweater and my first sweater that's not for myself. So, and I haven't even knit that many garments for myself. I've knit like, I think the Lento will be my fourth one. So I'm excited about this, but I am a little trepidatious about it too. So I'm going to do what I was saying about having him try it on, knit a little more and block it and see, and hopefully it works out. And if it has to become something else, then that's fine too. <laughs> so that's where I'm at with that. And the last one I want to talk about is a quilting. So quilting whip. So this is technically not a whip yet. It's just a plan in my brain. But I did want to mention again that um, the next quilt I'm planning to make is the Omega Quilt by Miss Make. And I'll put a picture here. And they are hosting a quilt along for this starting January 30th on Instagram. I think it's like six or eight weeks. Um, and if you've never done a quilt along, it's very similar to a knit along. You know, they publish like a schedule. So like the first week usually you like gather and cut your fabric and then each week you sell like a certain amount of blocks and then you assemble it. Um, and I find that's usually a pretty good pace for me for quilting. So I still haven't decided what fabrics I wanna use. Um, I kinda wanna make this really big, like a king size, cause um, we recently moved into a new house and we now have a king size bed and currently we have two quilts on it because none of them are big enough <laughs> to cover the whole bed. So I kind of love to just make like a huge one. And I think what I might do is go to the local thrift stores and see if I can find some um, big sheets or some secondhand textiles that I wanna use, maybe like four or five different colors. Um, I could make a smaller version from scraps that I already have, but the quilts are definitely piling up around here <laughs> in the throw size. And I feel like having like a huge quilt that we could put on our bed and some really pretty like neutral colors would be something that we would really use and would fill a hole. So I'm leaning towards that. So maybe this week or next weekend, I'll go out and get get those fabrics. So, but yeah, I'm really excited about this quilt along. Um, and let me know if any of you are gonna jump in on this quilt along. I think it's a it would be a good first quilt or maybe like a second quilt. Like it's pretty simple, traditional piecing. Um, basically you just piece rectangles, I think, and then you cut or it might even be strips and then you cut them and then you use a template to make that like wavy design um and then you so there's like a little bit of curved sewing when you sew the curved pieces together but it's nothing like super dramatic like 
a quarter circle or anything like that. It's like a very soft, gentle curve. So if you've been quilting and you want to jump into trying some curves, I feel like this would be a good first project for that. Or if you're an adventurous beginner, I think it would be great for that. So yeah, I hope some of you will join me um, in this and let me know if you decide to or if you just have any any ideas for colors or anything like that. So those are all my whips. <laughs> and now I'm going to share some very exciting acquisitions with you all. Okay, so something that's been on my to sew list for a really long time is the Poppy Coat by We Are The Fabric Store. I'll put a picture in here. It's a really pretty like classic oversized coat with these big lapels um, and welt pockets and I just love it. Like um, a year, last winter, I made the Nova Coat by I think it's Paper Cut Patterns and I wear it all the time. Like I wear it almost every day and it's pretty much my only winter coat <laughs> at this point and I really need some more because we have intense winters here in Columbus in Ohio. And so I was kind of just waiting for like the perfect coating fabric to come along because I knew I wanted either solid navy was my first idea. But then the more I thought about it, the more I was like, I kind of want this to make more of a statement, like maybe a plaid. <laughs> so then I was just looking and looking for like a dark navy or blue plaid. And finally it came along. So Blackbird Fabrics, who's based in Canada, um, I buy online from them. They recently had a drop of dead stock wool coatings. Um, and I, one of them, I was, as soon as I saw it, I was like, that's perfect. So I'm gonna lift this up and show it to you. It is super heavy and chunky and hard to deal with. So it's probably just gonna fill the whole screen and then I will talk about it in a second. Can you see that? It's getting a little blown out. There we go. Okay, but like, look how thick and heavy that is. Whew. Okay, so I want you to see the color. There it is. So it's got like a charcoal gray base with a black plaid and little stripes of blue. And it is double faced wool. So that's the wrong end. You can see that's the front and then on the back is just solid black. So it's really nice and thick and warm and it's gonna be perfect for this kind of like big oversized coat. I also ordered some of their solid black uh, rayon Bemberg lining and this is like so scrumptious. This is my favorite lining. I love rayon Bemberg. It's much cheaper than silk. It's easier to take care of um, and it's a perfect match for this fabric. So. I will say um, I'm usually really good with my sewing. I pre-wash all of my fabrics, just how I know I'm gonna put them in the washing machine with the rest of my clothes, unless it's a coat. <laughs> I do not pre-wash my wool or my lining for my coats. Sorry about that, I ran out of storage space <laughs> on my camera. Um, so I was saying that I um, don't pre-wash my wool or my lining for any outerwear. And that's because once a year I just get my coats dry cleaned and that's pretty much all I do unless um, I spill something really big on it, in which case I would just probably get it dry cleaned again. Um, I just find that my coats don't need to be washed that often. I never wash them at home. Um, I try to keep an eye on them and spot clean and care for them where necessary. And then at the beginning of each season, I just get them dry cleaned, just once a year usually. And I do store them in the winter as well in, um, you know, like a bag or something just so they're not like exposed all winter or in my cedar chest, my secondhand cedar chest that I inherited. Um, so yeah, I did just want to talk a little bit about the sizing for the poppy coat because it runs really big. Like you can even see on the photo how oversized it is on the model. And I looked at the finished garment chart. I think I sized it, like based on the body measurements, I think I sized into like a size 22 hip or something. But based on the finished measurements, I think I'm gonna make a size 16, um, at least for my muslin, because I do wanna check how like, I've read that this pattern is really long, like in the body, but also in the sleeves. So I am gonna make a muslin just of the torso and the sleeves at least. And it basically, this pattern is like a column from the 
chest down. So the chest measurement for the size 16 straight down would still give me about 10 plus inches of ease around the hip, which I think is gonna be plenty. Uh, worst case scenario, I would grade from like a 16 to an 18 maybe. So that's why I'd wanna make the muslin um, because this is an investment project. You know, I waited for the right fabric um, and it was not an inexpensive fabric. So, and it's something I wanna use for years and years to come. So I'm gonna take the time to do the muslin and make sure the fit is right um, before I cut into it. But I am hoping to have this cut out um, at least cut out hopefully or have the muslin finished by the next time I record. So the rest of my acquisitions are yarny. So last weekend I went to Chicago with a couple of friends to help my friends shop for bridesmaids dresses. And while we were there, I said the one place I wanted to go was Yarnify, the local yarn store in Chicago, or at least one of them. So um, it was actually, I was talking to my a uh, friend, my Instagram friend, Jess, from our, uh, who I met through the Winter Wishes Sock Swap that was hosted by La Mercerie. And I told her I was going to Chicago and I kind of wanted to pick up yarn for another Lento. And uh, she said that Yarnify had been suggested to her. And so I decided to check that out. And I'm actually gonna put a little bit of footage in at the end of the video from my trip to Yarnify. Just a couple little quick clips so you could see the inside. It's an awesome yarn store. I would highly recommend it if you're in the Chicago area. Worth a visit. You could drive there or you could take the L. That's what we did. And it was really nice. Um, so I'm gonna jump in here. Oh, actually, I just realized the first thing I was gonna tell you about was not from Yarnify, so rewind. <laughs> Okay, the first thing I'm gonna show you, we'll come back to Yarnify. The first thing I'm gonna show you fits into my trend theme that I mentioned at the beginning of the episode. So last year, my trend that I jumped on was shackets, and this year it is hot, hot pink. <laughs> and I wanna talk about this a little bit. I feel like I'm about to have my like, those belts are cerulean, not blue moment from Devil Wears Prada, if you know what I'm talking about. So I work full time as a fashion designer and a lot of what we do is trend forecasting because we're always working a year ahead. So like right now we are about to start designing for spring of 2024. And one of the big trends that we've been seeing that started, you know, a few months ago, three to four, maybe five months ago at this point in the high, high end designers is this like super hot, vibrant, pink like magenta neon color and the first person that really brought this to the fore was valentino and i'm going to put a picture in of this collection that they did where every single thing in the collection was this hot pink color this like super neon pinky purple color and it was just like head to toe drenched in this color um and in the fall i was in new york for a shopping trip for work and I walked past Saks Fifth Avenue and every single thing in their windows was this color. And ever since then, it's just been popping up everywhere. And the other thing is that the trend forecasters are predicting that this color is going to continue to be huge until and probably beyond when the Barbie movie comes out in June. So we're like constantly talking about all this stuff at work, you know, trying to work these colors in, etc. But I am like, I gotta jump on this train because I love this color and it's very popular and fun. And I feel like this is just the peak of like dopamine dressing. Like this is a happy color. Like when you're wearing this color, it adds something, you know, it's just, it lifts you. And I think that's part of the reason why it's so popular. And I'm starting to see all of these like super vibrant and neon colors out there. And I think it's because we're all just like getting back out in the world and everybody wants to be happy and feel like lifted and excited in their clothes. So I decided for my second Lento, for the Let's Lento Cal, that I wanted it to be hot pink. I'm obsessed with this color. So I did like a scouring of the internet, looking at all the different hot pink yarns. And I feel like this is one of those yarns that's like hard to shop for online because there's, you know, sometimes they don't photograph exactly right. And I felt like I was kind of taking a risk when I finally like decided the one that I wanted. Um, but I ordered this 
from Wild Hand, which I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I have like favorite local yarn shops that I've never been to <laughs> that I only like follow on Instagram and buy from their website. But like if I ever go to that city, I have to go there. And Wild Hand is one of those for me. So they are based in Philadelphia and it's just a beautiful shop. If you don't follow them on Instagram, I highly recommend it. Everyone that works there just seems like so lovely and I just, they have an excellent selection of yarn brands that I really like. That's where I got my Wandering Flock from for my um, Keswick scarf that I shared on the last episode. And it's like, if I know I want something vibrant and fun in color, I always look there first because they have such a good selection of fun colors. And um, okay, so this is, this yarn is from Kelborn Woolens and this is their perennial base. And I believe this is also a Philadelphia based company. So this is kind of local for Wild Hand. And I've actually used this yarn before for socks and I really, really, I knew I liked it as a fingering weight yarn. So when I saw this color, I was like, that's it. And I was torn because they have neon pink and pink. <laughs> and I actually had some of the neon pink in my stash already. And my very first thought was, I'll just use that. But when I pulled it out, it was a little too dark for what I was looking for. And then I saw this one and I was like, it's not technically neon, but it is like that exact color that I'm looking for. And it's very bright still, but it's like a little bit lighter than the actual neon pink. So you can see, it's so nice. So yeah, so I ordered this. And the great thing about the Lento is that you don't need that much yardage. So for me, I only needed two skeins of this for my Lento. I did decide that I wanna pair it with pink fuzzy mohair. <laughs> so I'm gonna have a fuzzy hot pink sweater and I cannot wait. So I should say um, this perennial, it is 60% superwash merino, 25% surrey alpaca and 15% nylon. So I don't know if you can see that, but it does have already a little bit of halo on its own. It's a little bit fluffy. So then I'm gonna also pair it with mohair. <laughs> and I haven't gotten the mohair that I ordered yet, so I'll put a picture of it in. Um, and it is from Pearl Soho, and I believe it's the tussock base. And the color is called like Joyful or something. I'll put it, I'll write it in here. But it just was, when I saw it, I was like, it's perfect. Like it fits the mood, it fits the color, it's gonna be great. So I can't wait to get that in and start working on this. I gotta finish my other Lento, which I also love, but I'm really excited about this one. And the best part is that Troy hates this color, so every time he sees me working on it, he's gonna hate it. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that, but he does hate hot pink, but you know what, it's not about him. It's about what makes me happy, so. <laughs> I'm very excited about my hot pink Lento, and I hope you all will jump on the hot pink bandwagon. Let me know what you think about this color. I feel like I could see it being polarizing. I love it but I'm interested to hear what you all think about this and about the trend in general. And just one more little thing I have jump to continue on the hot pink train. Um, so my sock swap partner, my sock swap partner Jess also sent me um, some like barber cords, the like silicone cords that you put on the tips of your needles to slide your stitches off and on so you can like try things on. And these were like a game changer for me. This is like, I hate, I would never try on garments because I hated having to put all my stitches on like a waist yarn or like a stitch holder. And I just like would avoid it at all costs because I found it such a pain to do. But the um, cord, these silicone cords, like I make it so easy. So I was influenced by uh, Casey at Young Folk Knits podcast who also uses these and shared that you can get a whole spool of the silicone cords on Amazon for like $10. I will put the link for this below because this is the best thing ever. So I love the set that Jess gave me, but I was like, I need a set of these in like every project bag now. So I went on Amazon and I ordered a whole spool and I could probably make like 10 to 15, I don't even know. This feels like this is gonna last me forever because you can also reuse them. It's not like a one use thing, but I'm so excited about these and it works just as well as the store-bought ones. Um, I have not used the actual like barber brand cords, but what, what, everything I have so far has worked great for me. So yeah, of course I had to get hot pink. So that's my hot pink silicone cords. 
and I highly recommend ordering some of this for yourself because it's awesome. You just pull out the length you need and cut it with scissors and that's it. And it's way cheaper than buying like the Barber brand cords and you get as much as you need. And they come in fun colors. So maybe this is how you get your hot pink in this year. I love these. Okay, so now I'm gonna circle back <laughs> to Yarnify, my, the Chicago yarn store. That was all my, that was my pink interlude. We'll come back to Yarnify. So yes, I was in Chicago and I took a trek to Yarnify and I told myself I was going to buy a, another sweater quantity for a Lento because I knew I wanted to make three and I didn't have yarn for the third one. And I was gonna buy some sock yarn to make some more socks for my partner, Troy, who um, I recently made him his first pair of socks and he really likes them. So what should we start with, sweater or socks? Let's start with the Lento. So this was the one I was saying is ended up super similar to one that uh, Rebecca is gonna make for her own knit along. Um, so this is, the brand is Ba Savannah. Here is the yarn. It's a really, really pretty neutral hand-dyed speckly yarn. So, and I debated about this, like this really caught my eye and I knew I wanted like a creamier neutral version as my third version of the Lento. I almost didn't buy this because it does have quite a bit of this brown in it. And that brown is not dissimilar from the Lento I'm working on now. But I decided I was gonna pair this one with mohair and I got a cream mohair. So I'm hoping that will make the whole thing read a little bit more creamy and less brown and it's gonna be speckled and have more texture. Um, but yes, yeah, so, and it does have hits of like pink and like little flecks and a couple little darker spots in it like that. So I think it's gonna be really pretty. Um, I should say this is their Savannah base. So it's Ba Yarns and this is the Savannah base. It's 10% cashmere, 10% nylon, and 80% superwash merino. So hopefully wherever I end up with length on the version I'm working on now, that also has like the silk and superwash content, because this one I think will grow similarly, although the mohair might prevent that a little bit. I'll probably duplicate that for the other two versions. So this color is called Toasted Neutral. Really, really pretty. And then I'm gonna pair that with um, Rowan Kid Silk Haze. They don't have color names, but this is color 00634, and it's like a slightly off-white. It's like creamy, but I think it's like a really good match for this yarn base. So I feel like this is gonna be like a toasty, cozy sweater. Yeah, it's 30% mohair, or sorry, 70% mohair, 30% silk. And I have yet to make a sweater with mohair. I know this is like the thing now. So I'm gonna hopefully end up with three lintos, the current one I'm working on, which is a DK weight, and then the other two will be fingering weight with mohair. And I'm really excited about this one. I, I do um, have a question for you all. I have not knit a garment with hand dyed yarn yet that is this variegated. And I have two skeins and I'm wondering if I should alternate skeins on every row to prevent pooling or like if because I'm pairing it with the mohair that'll be enough to like even it out like what would you recommend I would love to know what you recommend um but I'm very excited to see how this knits up I might do a swatch just to make sure I like it because if not I could use these two skeins of fingering for something else easily and find another project for the mohair um but I think it'll be pretty so I'm excited about that and then lastly, um, you know, whenever I go to a local yarn store, I always try to buy local if I can. Um, so I ask them, you know, what are your local dyers? And they actually, they were so helpful in the shop, but they also had a really cute pre-made like card that you could look at, like a sheet of paper that showed you like all the, nat the, all the local dyers and where they were based and where they were from and what they made, which I thought was such a great idea that like, you know, if it's busy and you just need to like peruse for yourself, they have that as a resource. So that was cool. So one of the local dyers, um, and I believe they're actually based in Minnesota. So it's a little bit of a stretch, but they're Midwestern at least, <laughs> close enough to Chicago. 
Um, one that they carried was three Irish girls, three Irish girls yarn ink. Each skein is hand dyed. Um, and I got two skeins, two different skeins of their Adorn Luxe base, Adorn Luxe tonals. Oh, sorry, there's variegated and tonals. And both of these are going to become socks for my partner. And he prefers vibrant. He like definitely has a more colorful color palette than me. So I tried to pick colors I thought he would like and it also just worked out perfectly that they're both named after places that like we really like and he really loves. So here's the tag, three Irish girls. And this is the first skein. I wonder if it's showing up. This is like really teal. <laughs> like maybe I can get it to pick up. Mm, it looks much darker on screen. It's like a very vibrant, maybe over here, super vibrant teal. And it has a little bit of speckles and variation, but it's a pretty solid tonal teal. It's really pretty. I feel like I'm leaning towards doing like an all over ribbed sock with this with maybe like a couple little bands of white at the top. So it kind of has like that athletic look or something. Um, but yeah, it's super pretty. This is an 85 Merino 15% nylon blend. So yeah, and this color is called Desert Turquoise. And Troy loves the desert. He is obsessed with the desert, so I thought that was perfect. And I'm sad, he really, it's really showing up super like darker and more blue on the screen, but it's very bright turquoise. And the last one, this is the same yarn, same base, same company, but this colorway is called Savannah. Oh yeah, that looks pretty. And um, Troy and I love to visit Savannah, Georgia. It's like personally one of my favorite places in the country that I've been to. It just has like a magical quality and it's so, so beautiful. And I feel like this color like really evokes how the city's like a little mysterious and dark and moody and magical. And I just love it, it's really nice. There's like flecks of blue and purple and red and green. It's just, yeah, I feel like this is gonna knit up so, so pretty. So yeah, and they're even kind of fun together. Like if I have leftovers, I might do like a contrasting cuff and toe or a stripe or something. And these would be fun in like a pair of shorties or something. So yeah, I'm hoping to get maybe like three pairs of socks out of these two skeins. And that is the end of my extensive <laughs> acquisitions for this time. I didn't really expect them all to show up at once, but you know, I had an order and I had a local yarn store visit. So yeah, it's very exciting. Um, I think that's about it. So I would love to also hear about your local yarn stores or, you know, if you're like me and you have like a favorite local yarn store that you've never been to, <laughs> but you just shop there online, drop them below. Let me know. Let me know what you think about the hot pink. Let me know if you're jumping in on any of these knit alongs or quilt alongs. And I'm going to pop a little bit of footage from my visit to Yarnify in here at the end. But that's going to do it for me today. So thank you so much for watching. Um, if you made it this far and you enjoy the videos, please like the videos. Please subscribe to the channel. That will really help me to grow this. Um, you know, this is only my third video, but I'm really excited to keep doing them. And I hope to grow the channel so we can build like a bigger community here and really have some dialogue. So thank you for watching and stick around for the Yarnify footage. And I'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Bye. Music